Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Criminal Insider. Some of you guys might recognize you from that hit show, a story written by a current prisoner. However, here on Criminal Insider, we like to do things just a little bit differently. You know, so we're going to go ahead and highlight one fascinating article that was produced by the Los Angeles Times. It revolves around none other than the notorious Mexican Mafia. Now, without a shadow of a doubt, ladies and gentlemen, the Mexican Mafia has always had its headquarters, its stronghold right here in the Los Angeles area, in particular with, with, with neighborhoods like Paramount. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are from the surrounding area, from the surrounding environment, know that Paramount has always had well-established neighborhoods, barrios, you know, going back since the 50s and the 60s, if even not even before then, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we have barrios such as um the Dog Patch Gang. We have Eastside Paramount. We got Brown Nation. We got uh, Sand Street. We have uh, Paramount 420. And a slew of other gangs, man, that, that, I, that I'm missing, man. But from my understanding, man, Paramount has always been a, a, a gang-infested area. Of, of course, man, underneath, you know, the stronghold of its founding fathers, the Mexican Mafia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from my understanding, there's neighborhoods within Paramount that don't even get along with Paramount. So this story right here revolves around the Mexican Mafia member making his bones, man, climbing the ranks in order to become one of them. Now, Sometimes, I mean, you got to take down a leader to become a leader. And unfortunately, a leader of Paramount lost his life in order for another one to prevail in this criminal world, ladies and gentlemen. So please hit that like and subscribe button. This article was produced by Matthew Ormsmith, a fascinating staff writer at the Los Angeles Times. Let's go ahead and dive right into this, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, man, you know, another straight gangster drop, man. It's, in the, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting tale. Let's go ahead and dive right into this. Calculated business decision, Mexican Mafia member convicted of murder in Paramount. Around noon one day in May 2016, Hector Velasquez walked over to the passenger side of a black Chrysler 300 sedan and leaned into the open window. A crack rang out and Velasquez staggered out backwards saying, he shot me, he shot me. Someone in the Mexican Mafia had wanted Velasquez dead. Who or why has never been made clear. But a jury this week found the car's driver guilty of killing him. Robert Hinojos, 41, was convicted of murdering Velasquez at the end of a month-long trial that shed light on the workings of the Mexican Mafia, a group of about 140 men who wield enormous influence in the prisons where most of them live and over street gangs across Southern California. For gunning down Velasquez, prosecutors argued, Hinojos earned their place in the Mexican Mafia, giving him the authority to collect money from drug dealers and gang members on the street and behind bars. So they got him with the old okie doke method. You know, Velasquez was shot by the old okie doke method. They called him over to the window. You know, obviously this person must have been a person of confidence. You know, he, it was his friend, someone that he knew, someone that he can get close to. Called him over to the window, bam, they let him have it. You know, a lot of gangsters have been smoked with that specific method right there, the old okie doke method. Hey, come over here, okay, call me. Hey, you know Sandra? Hey, you know this girl? You know that girl? You know, and then bam, they let him have it. Hey, can you tell me where this person is? Boom, they let him have it. You know, there's some sick methods out there. I've heard of people actually walking up to people's doors, knocking on the doors and saying, hey, um, is such and such here? You know, telling the mom or the brother, go get the individual and then walk up to the front door and then boom, they let him have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's real, that's real gang banging stuff man that happens out here in these los angeles streets man it's sick it's twisted but it's real man it's real we're gonna go ahead and continue reading off ladies and gentlemen the worst thing about it was this wasn't even personal deputy district attorney amy murphy told jurors there was no indication the men had ever met before the day of the murder to hinojos murphy said killing velasquez was a cold calculated business decision Inojos, who is known as Dopey, went to prison at 19 when he was sentenced to 12 years for armed robbery. He ended up doing 15 years in all after getting caught smuggling drugs in the Monterey County prison, according to a spokesperson for the state prison system. A member of Brown Nation, a small Latino gang in Paramount, Inojos gained a reputation in prison as a reliable, efficient moneymaker for several Mexican mafia members, according to testimony and a former associate of Inojos who requested anonymity for fear of retaliation. So here we have this striving and up and coming gangster from Barrio Brown Nation, Dopey. He's 19 years old. He gets sentenced to 12 years in prison. He picks up an additional three years, 
you know, for smuggling and contraband, for, you know, for smuggling and drugs, you know, trying to make money behind bars. When you make money behind bars, you already know it, it, it falls underneath the, the jurisdiction, underneath the control of the mob. You know what I'm saying? So they took a liking to this individual. You know, he, he's even willing to pick up an extra an extra three years, you know, to make some money. You know, they found this individual to be an asset to them. It, it stated right there that several Mexican mafia members found this individual to be reliable and, and money makers for them. So, of course, you know, they embraced him. So we're going to go in and continue reading, man, and see how this whole thing plays out. Inojos was one of five camaradas, high-ranking associates of the Mexican Mafia, who ran a collection racket known as La Clica, Spanish for The Click. According to testimony, the Clica system arose after a Mexican Mafia member from Ranch Cucamanga, Arthur Turi Estrada, fell out of favor with others in the organization and was stripped of a vast racket that was bringing in money from nearly every California prison, according to testimony and sources. Inojos and the other associates, men who were just short of being full-fledged members, took over Estrada's operation, collecting the money that had once flowed to him and dividing it amongst various Mexican mafia members in state and federal prison, according to testimony and sources. Okay, whatever duty had, whatever neighborhoods he had, they became the Clicas homes. They mean all the carnatics. Mexican mafia members are going to eat from that. One Mexican mafia associate explained to another in a recorded call that was transcribed and filed in federal court. Wow. So who we have, Thudi, man, from Mancha Cucamanga. Obviously, he was a well-known, violent, influential Mexican mafia member who yielded vast power and vast control over these California prisons, man. Obviously, he was generating money in almost every single prison and collecting money from every California prison in, in, in the state. Now that's 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 a lot of power right there, ladies and gentlemen. With that comes a lot of hate. With that comes a lot of envy. There's a lot of people who who want that control. There's a lot of people who want that money that's being generated from from his 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 brackets. So what happens? He fell from graces. He fell in disregard, and people can be happier. That he's on disregard why because now they got to take over his businesses now they got to eat better now they got more thousands coming in every single week every single month why because this brother this so-called mexican mafia brother fell out fell from disregard but when they fall from disregard it benefits them it's a twisted world ladies and gentlemen it's a dog eat dog world when you hope someone falls because you want to take over the business <laughs> It was into the tumult on December 27, 2015, Hinojos, then 34, was released from state prison. After five months later, a girlfriend called Hinojos from Los Angeles County Jail. The call was recorded and played for the jury. They actually offered me uh, that promotion, Hinojos said. I just got to like uh, kind of stack the cabinets a little bit quicker, you know. To interrupt Inojo's words, prosecutors called to the witness stand Rene Boxer Enriquez, a Mexican mafia member who defected in 2002. In 2002, he has since testified in dozens of prosecutions of his former confederates, specializing in deciphering coded or vowed messages in phone calls, letters, notes, and other communications. When Hinojo said promotion, he meant that he had been offered membership in the Mexican Mafia, Enriquez testified. And needing to stack the cabinets a little bit quicker meant that before he was inducted, he had to take care of something, he said. So here we have Dopey, who's talking to his girl, you know, on the Los Angeles County phone. And, you know, he feels, he feels the need, he feels the necessity to enlighten her. You know, he's being pulled, you know, to become a member of the Mexican Mafia. You know, let that be a lesson learned to you guys, man. That it doesn't matter who you're talking to. They're always listening. They're always monitoring. Just because they let you slide for a few weeks or a few months or even a few years, man. You're just building up a case against yourself. You know what I'm saying? You best believe that they're watching. They're watching. Especially when they have gang experts like Rene Boxer Enriquez, man. Who obviously himself was a former Mexican mafia, but he was a killer himself. He himself, man, caused a lot of chaos. He had a lot of people hit. So he himself... Is, is more than qualified to be able to decipher your guys' coded message, your guys' carnival talk. Someone with his high intellect will be able to break all that down and, and present it to the jurors, man, and, and, and build a beautiful case, man, to send your ass away for life. That's truth and that's facts. 
The following morning, May 13, 2016, Enojos met a group of men for breakfast at Danny's. One of them was Velasquez, who was described at trial as being affiliated with Compton's 155 Street Gang. Enojo said he was there to help Velasquez collect a $10,000 drug debt from a leader of Paramount's Dog Patch Gang, Mario Snaps Chaviera, according to a witness who was at the breakfast. The following morning, May 13, 2016, Enojos met a group of men for breakfast at Danny's. One of them was Velasquez, who was described at trial as being affiliated with Compton's 155 Street Gang. Enojos said he was there to help Velasquez collect a $10,000 drug debt from a leader of Paramount's Dog Patch Gang. Mario snapped Chaviera, according to a witness, who was at the breakfast. They left the Dannys to look for Chevrier. Enojos drove alone in a black Chrysler 300, the witness said. Velasquez was standing near a street curb in Paramount when the Chrysler pulled up. He walked toward the car and leaned into the passenger side window. Then a shot rang out. The sedan sped off. As he lay dying, Velasco told the sheriff's deputy that a Hispanic man in the black Chrysler had shot him, the deputy testified. Prosecutors did not say anything at trial about who may have ordered Enojos to kill Velasquez. Six hours after the shooting, Enojo's girlfriend called his mother from jail complaining that she had been calling him all day and nothing. It's not ringing. Um, he got that promotion, Enojo's mother said, so he's going to be offline for like a week. Three days later, the girlfriend called Enojo's from jail and asked, congratulations or what? He told her he got the job. I finished the project myself, he said, and um, now I just got to wait till like all the paperwork basically to be filed. You know, so obviously, man, this Hinojo's character, man, you know, Dopey, he, you know, he did that, you know, he did that murder. And obviously he, for some reason, he felt the need to enlighten his family. And that statement kind of, it kind of baffled me when he said that his own mom was the one that told his girlfriend that he hadn't been inducted to the mob. And that, that kind of comes to us as a surprise. I think that I, I, me, myself, I would think that he would kind of keep that to himself, not tell his mom or not tell his girl. Especially when it when it's you know so sudden so quick like that. Uh, however, he confided in his family, and his family um, took it upon themselves to speak on county jail recorded phones, and and they used that as evidence in trial to to prosecute these individuals. So um, we're gonna go ahead and, and continue continue reading, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, man, when you talk and when you confide in people, man, it can never go good for you. Always keep it to yourself. That's another lesson to be learned. Enriquez, the former Mexican mafia member, interrupted this to mean that Enojos had personally carried out the task he had been ordered to do, that he had been sponsored for membership in the Mexican mafia, and now he was waiting the results of the vote. Witnesses for both the prosecution and the defense agreed that Hinojos is now a Mexican Mafia member and Enriquez testified that some of its most influential figures had pushed for Hinojos to be admitted. That included Jose Joker Gonzalez from the East Side's Big Hazard Gang and Michael Mosca Torres whom law enforcement officially considered the organization's dominant member in the San Fernando Valley. Enojo's lawyer, Marvin Vallejo, acknowledged that his client was a gangster and a drug dealer, but disputed the idea he had killed Velasquez to gain entrance into the Mexican Mafia. Point me into the direction of the evidence that says it's because he killed Barrico, he said, referring to Velasquez by his nickname. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have, man, right away when they mention those two names are some two notorious, reputable, formidable mob names. You know, we got Mosca from San Fed. And we got Big Joker from Big Hazard, man. Both of those individuals, man, have yielded power across these Los Angeles streets for decades, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking for decades. Those two are some of the two most influential members. And for them to, to raise their hand and to vouch for an individual like Dopey, you know, it, it, it kind of does speak volumes. It does speak volumes. A judge had barred Hinojos from receiving visits, mail, or phone calls from anyone but his attorney. In a petition seeking relief from the restrictions, Hinojos said he was confined to a one-man cell, five feet by seven feet, except for him when he was taken to a shower or goes to the exercise yard. Even then, the petition said he was locked in a steel cage by himself. County lawyers said the strict confinement was necessary as one of several Mexican Mafia members controlling the Los Angeles County jail system, they argued. Enojos had used other inmates' pens to make phone calls and had them send and receive mail on his behalf, Enojos, they said. 
Enojos, they said, is the prime suspect in several ongoing investigations into other serious and violent crimes. Looming over the trial was another murder, one committed after Enojos had been jailed on suspicion of killing Velasquez. Enriquez analyzed for the jury video a jail visit between Enojos and a different girlfriend, Patricia Aragon. He interrupted a snapping gesture Aragon made to mean she was discussing Xaviera, the gang member whose nickname was Snaps. And when she formed her hand in the shape of a mouth, Enrique said she was raising the possibility that Shavira was talking to the police. Nah, Enojos said in the visit, don't trip. Enriquez took this to mean that Hinojos did not believe Shira could be cooperating with authorities. But later in the conversation, Aragon told him, I don't care about it. It's just going to be BAM. Still later, she told Hinojos, don't act surprised when it happens. But then there is the fact of what happened to Xaviera. Hours after Aragon visited Hinojos in jail, Xaviera was gunned down outside his home in Paramount. Prosecutors said they have no reason to believe that Hinojos ordered the murder. Nonetheless, he was recorded in his jail cell whispering to another Mexican mafia member, Daniel Daniel Morpina, that his girlfriend had told him someone had been killed. I think, I'm thinking that's a good thing, Hinojos said. I'm thinking things just got more interesting. His apparent relief at the death of Sharia, whom his girlfriend, at least according to Enriquez, had identified as an informant, was evidence he had killed Velasquez, prosecutor argued to the jury. Xavier probably knew of the plot to kill Velasquez, authorities said, but he was not an informant. The detective who investigated Velasquez's murder, Dean Camarillo, testified he had never spoken with Xavier. <sighs> wow, here we have this inferior, dominating presence, this overwhelming power that the Mexican mafia yields within their hands you know this power is is um is, is is toxic as you can see this up and coming gangster dopey you know was striving was striving and he wanted to yield that power ladies and gentlemen but he is that individual now but at what expense at what expense you know at 19 years old he picked up 12 years picked up another three years came around the streets he was only on the streets for a short period of time then he killed someone. Then he became a Mexican mafia member. Now he yields that power. But now he can never be with a woman. Now he can never drive a car. Now he can never be able to sleep in the comfort with, in, in his own home and wake up to his kids on Christmas. You know, all of these things that he's sacrificing, spending his, uh, watching his kids grow, you know, being there for his family, for, for their heartbreaks, being there for his woman when she gets lonely at night. All of these things that, that you miss out on life to heal, to yield that overwhelming power. Yes, you're generating tens of thousands of dollars. Yes, you have people that, 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 are, that are making money that are willing to kill for you. But for what? You can't drive that Mercedes Benz. You can't live in that fancy house on the block. You're, you're there enjoying what you can enjoy in the confinement of that, of that space you're in. So take heed, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are up and coming, for those of you that are striving, for those of you that want to become a gangster, you know, as you can see, it never ends well. So many people have wanted to yield that power at the expense of what? At the expense of everything. At the expense of everything. That was just one news article, man, out there from the Paramount area. Please hit that like and subscribe button. On your way out, ladies and gentlemen, this was an article produced by the Los Angeles Times. In particular, fascinating writer, Matthew Ornsmith, man. Thank you for stopping by.